Hey everyone, welcome back to Who's There. I'm your host, Allison. If you're new here, thank you for joining us. And if you're returning, thank you for coming back. This is a podcast where I talk to a new horror fan every week because I hope to destigmatize what it means to be a horror movie fan. Because most of us are just regular people who like the adrenaline rush of being scared for some reason. And here we delve into those reasons. I'm stoked to get into today's conversation because this week we have my very good friend Ashley Wells on the podcast. Ashley and I have known each other for over a decade, and before COVID, we would have regular movie nights with big groups of our friends, including watching the movie Puka last December, which was an experience to say the least. Ashley is also a writer as well as an avid horror movie fan, obviously, though she loves the exact opposite kinds of horror movies that I do, aka she likes gore and cannibalism, but that's totally cool. Our conversation was a lot of fun, and I know you'll have a good time listening to us ramble too. That's about it, so let's get into my conversation with Ashley. Hey Ashley, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for being here. Tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Um, I live in Brooklyn. I'm originally from Texas. I um, I actually kind of came to the horror genre a little bit late. I was too scared to watch <laughs> or read anything scary when I was very young, but I started getting into horror movies when I was in my 20s and uh, might be my favorite genre of movie now. I think that's about, I have a cat. Uh, she likes to watch <laughs> horror movies with me. Yeah, that pretty much covers it. Awesome. So first things first, what's your favorite scary movie? Oh, God. (laughs) Um, I don't know how scary people would think this is, but um, one of my my go-to... Is is the guest, which is kind of a mm-hmm. kind of an action horror thriller. Yes. Uh, okay, good. I'm glad you. Know, agree. Another person has said the guest before, so it's definitely oh, great. <laughs> it's so good. It's just like that's one of those I can just throw on any time, and it's like it's such a cool genre mashup, and it, uh, yeah, I just I love it. I think it's so funny and exciting and and like sexy all at the same time. And I love, I love the soundtrack. So that might be my favorite today. (laughs) It's a favorite. It's my favorite that's coming to mind right now. (laughs) All right, cool. Yeah. I think maybe the person who said it's their favorite, I can't remember who it was, but um, they also mentioned, I think the soundtrack. So I'm going to have to go back and listen to the soundtrack because I just recently watched it for the first time. And so I wasn't really paying any attention to the soundtrack. (laughs) Yeah, there's a lot going on. So you got you to watch it a few times to just to take it all in. Yeah. Uh, so you spoke to this a little bit in your introduction, but how did you first fall in love with the horror genre? What was your first movie that you saw? My first horror movie? Um, I think it was probably Misery. And that was one that I think I watched when I was babysitting and the kids had gone to bed. I was a little, bra- I don't know why, I was a little braver with my uh, viewing choices when I was babysitting versus when I was at home for some reason. <laughs> so that's I wish not, that's, that's I know. really curious because babysitters usually die. I know. It's so <laughs> weird, right? It's like totally counterintuitive. Like you would think like being in somebody else's house, you would be like way more like discombobulated and scared. But I don't know. I think I didn't have control of the remote that often when I was at home. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would not have put a scary movie on while my parents were there. So I think that's, yeah. So I was, yeah, anyway, I, I put the kids to bed and I was, just flipping channels and I think misery was on and I was sort of, Oh, sorry. There's an ambulance going by. (laughs) That's okay. This is New York city. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So I put the kids to bed and, uh, misery was on TV and I, I was like, even when I was a kid and I was too scared to watch or read anything scary, I was always kind of morbidly curious. I feel like that's how a lot of people kind of come to horror movies is, they think they're too scared, but they're also really curious. And so you kind of like, I think sometimes your curiosity gets the best of you eventually. So that was what happened to me with Misery. I was, I kind of knew what it was about. Um, I knew it was something I wasn't probably allowed to see at home. It was like, I was like 14 or 15. But since I was babysitting, I watched it anyway. And it was super exciting. And I, I don't know if I was super scared by it. I think it was, that was more suspenseful than just outright scary. But that was about all I could handle at that point anyway. Um, cool. Yeah, so that that was probably my first one. Nice. So, are you a Stephen King fan today? Um, I like some of his books and some of the movies that have been adapted from them. I'm trying to think which are like my favorites. Uh, I mean, like The Shining, obviously. Everyone loves The Shining. <laughs> um, yeah, he's he's not like my most favorite, but it is it is really interesting to see all the different adaptations of his work because he's so generous with letting letting uh, you know young filmmakers adapt his work. It's really cool to see what different people can do with them. So in that sense, I do I do really like it. 
Yeah. Definitely. What about you? Um, I do. I like his movies. I've never read any of his books because they're too terrifying to me. <laughs> um, I get scared reading a book that's about haunted houses in America. So I just, I, mean, I don't those are the it. most scary though. I, I love haunted houses, but I think they're very <laughs> scary. <laughs> I know you have Shudder. Did you watch Haunt? I have not watched Haunt yet. Did you like it? Yeah, I thought it was really good. Okay, cool. No, that is on my list. I that, that keeps coming up and I keep seeing really good things about it. Um, I've not seen that, but I have in, in the course of quarantine. I've now watched Host twice. Me too. Have you seen that one? <laughs> yeah, okay, good. God, I wanted to make sure because that's such a great uh, innovative use of Zoom. I, if, for people that don't know, it's kind of like unfriended, um, except that it's it's a horror movie. This is about an hour long. And it takes place entirely over Zoom call uh and i just thought it was so innovative and terrific i, I uh, really and really scary I just scared it is really eyes. scary it's amazing it's really really scary yeah so I, I really enjoyed that one <laughs> yeah so this is the question that i ask everyone that comes on here and it's why do you okay. think that people who seem perfectly sane love the horror genre <laughs> that's a great question <laughs> um i mean i think it is perfectly sad i don't know i feel like that question implies that uh that we're not we're just sort of wearing a facade of sanity but uh i think it is perfectly sane to want to consume media that um that put that tests your boundaries and to consume it in a way that you know is going to be safe ultimately I, I think that's, I, yeah, I think, I think we do that all the time in different ways. And I, again, I think everybody has their own tolerance and their own things that scare them and things that, that are exciting to them. But I, yeah, I think it's, I think everybody wants to kind of test their own, test their own boundaries um, as far as media consumption and, and, and discover like what's scary to them and what's not. That was part of, you know, what I, why I was curious about horror before I really ever watched any. I was, you know, I, I wanted to know what would scare me and what wouldn't and what would scared other people and what other people thought was scary. Because I know a lot of people are very um, scared by things that can really happen. So they don't find, like you and I, were, you were saying you find haunted houses really scary and I do too. But I guess a lot of people are more scared by things that could really happen, like home invasion movies and stuff yeah. like that. And those to me are, those are, you know, if they're done really well, they're very tense and upsetting and they, you know, it's definitely like, uh, you know, can be a really immersive experience sometimes in a really unpleasant way. But to me, those are not scary because they're kind of grounded in the real world. But mm. so, to some people, that is, that's very scary for specifically that reason. So I just think that's really interesting. Yeah, that um, is really interesting. Do you believe in ghosts? <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> but uh, I, yeah, so I, <laughs> I say that, but I do still find horror, like ghost horror and supernatural horror, very scary, even though I know it's not real. <laughs> That's <laughs> um, funny. I, yeah, it, I don't really, I can't really explain it ex other than just that I have a really vivid imagination. And when I'm, when I'm lying in bed in, at night with the lights off, I can tell myself until I'm blue in the face that ghosts aren't real but if I've just watched something like host or um even like the first paranormal activity I thought was very scary and I was yeah. very scared that night when I <laughs> went to bed even though I, I did not for a second think any of it was real it's just like there's something about the mood that it creates that to me is more real than my knowledge that ghosts are not real <laughs> if that makes sense yeah definitely have you seen the other paranormal activity movies I've seen most of them. I think there's one newer one that's not a paranormal activity number. It has like a subtitle. And I think I yeah, haven't the, seen that one, maybe. The ghost Dimension? That one I have seen. I think there's one that's like not La Llorona, but some other kind of like Latin American legend or something that's newer than the Ghost that's Dimension. That's number five. I okay. Think. That's the one that I haven't seen. I also just found out there's like a Japanese one recently. I haven't seen that one either. I don't know if it's like canon <laughs> paranormal activity, but I have seen all the other ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah I find them I super like them. fun. Yeah. Yeah. I like them a lot. I think they're really watchable. <laughs> so you mentioned liking to test your boundaries. What are your boundaries today with horror movies? Um, I, I mean, I'll watch pretty much anything. If I, I mean, I kind of, I kind of draw the line at, um, really gratuitous sexual violence um, and really like graphic sexual violence. I find that very, just really hard to watch. I'm sure a lot of people, both sexes do. Yeah, if I've, if I've been warned in advance that something like that is gonna be really like stomach churning, then I will stay away from that. Also, uh, I really don't like watching people throw up. <laughs> so uh, if 
there's a lot of that. I, I don't really mind gore at all. So yeah, so those I do kind of draw the line at pretty much anything else I'm, I'm okay with, though. That's pretty much it. Um, I do tend to find things that are, um, I mean, obviously there's exceptions, but I do tend to find movies with really strong sexual violent, sexual violence in them. Uh, to A lot of times those are made by men and are kind of just feel a little like gratuitous and like a, like a cheap way to create tension and create sympathy for a character that I'm probably going to be on their side no matter what anyway. So, I mean, th- th- there's exceptions to that. I have watched, like, Ms. 45 is one that, a movie that starts with, with uh, two really intense rape scenes, oh. but I found that movie, like, overall still really worthwhile. So, obviously, there's exceptions, but yeah, um, yeah if I've been worried about something like that in advance, I usually stay away from it. <laughs> so, no, Last House on the Left for you? I did see that. I found it very, very unpleasant. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of an old school one. It's not as graphic as some of, I think, the newer ones. But, oh, sorry, did you mean the um, the remake or the West Either, either one. one. I've only seen the remake. I've seen oh, okay. clips from the original, but I I saw the remake back like six years ago. Okay, how did you how did you find it? Yeah, oh, it was really difficult to watch, and like yeah. all my friends are like, yeah, that's one we've seen once and never need to see again. Oh god, yeah, I pr- I'll probably skip that remake. But, yeah, I think the the older one, the West Craven one, is you know from a time when we could show less on screen. Yeah. It's still pretty hard to watch, and I'm still probably not ever going to watch yeah. that again. But yeah, I did did make it through that once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm currently making my way through Eli Roth's History of Horror on uh, AMC. Okay. And so I'm learning about a lot of these really graphic movies that I've never seen before. And they actually uh-huh. show a lot of the gore, which I'm uh-huh. really surprised about. So I'm like, yeah, if you've seen these movies. I think you're, I think they're kind of ruined. But <laughs> have you watched Yeah, them? maybe... I haven't. It sounds like maybe it's more geared towards people that have seen them and kind of want to know yeah. the, the history behind them, maybe. Uh, and I have. They sound really interesting. And he's the right person, I guess, to deal <laughs> with that kind of subject matter. Yeah, definitely. So do you have any favorite horror directors? Oh, gosh. I I do. <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, who off the top of my head that I really like. I mean, I really like, I, I like the Conjuring movies a lot. So, um, so James Wan, I think is great. Let's see who, I mean, Jordan, I loved, I loved Get Out. So Jordan Peele, obviously. Who else do I love? Yeah, Get Out and Us, I thought both were, were just spectacular. John Carpenter, of course, like, yeah. you know, he's, he's, I'm not, and not all of his movies are amazing, but they're all, I think, all the ones that I've seen, I would at least like recommend if to horror fans. I mean, the thing I think is a masterpiece. Um, and I really love the fog. I think probably more than a lot of people <laughs> do. I think, I don't think it's scary, but it's just such a great, I think it's really interestingly told like ensemble story where I really care about all the characters a lot, mm-hmm. um, which I think is really hard to do in an ensemble story. And I think that, you know, the mystery, the way the mystery gets unraveled, I think is really fun. And I love that all the characters that drive the, the action are basically are women, which I think is really pretty unusual. Um, and, and in a movie that doesn't really like, none of them really get like victimized. They're all kind of the ones taking charge of the action. Um, yeah, so obviously John Carpenter. Yeah, I guess Dario Argento. I, a lot of his movies are kind of coming up. Uh, I watched Phenomena recently, which is another one that I think might be hard for some people to watch because it has a lot of uh, bug content. Like, like specifically, the Jennifer Connelly's character is has like can like communicate with bugs and knows that they're like friendly most of the time. So she will like hold. There's a lot of scenes of her just like holding like a beetle or a tarantula or something and totally like chill about it. I'm just like, oh I my wonder God. How, how she calmed herself to get herself in the headspace for, for that. I mean, some people just genuinely are not creeped out by bugs. Uh, I don't know if she's one of them, but that, that, that one of them was a really like, that was a cool like take on kind of psychic, giallo, uh, my, creepy mind, stuff like that. That was really fun. Um, yeah, who the else the only I... Dario Argento movie that I've seen is Suspiria. Uh-huh. Or, yeah. Good choice. I, yeah, I've only seen, I've only seen the remake. I know it's very different from the original, which I haven't oh, had okay. watched yet, but I actually saw a lot of it on the Eli Roth show. So. Uh, yeah, I bet so. 
Yeah. Um, that is another one that's a real, like, I, I, I definitely recommend the, the original Suspiria. It's a, it's a real classic. I think for a lot of really good reasons. Um, that also has some, some gross stuff in it. I mean, it's from the 70s, so they can't, there's, yeah. there's sort of limits on what they can show. And I don't think the final reveal is particularly thrilling in Suspiria, but I, the atmosphere that, they cre- that he creates all throughout it, I think, is really effective. Um, and it just, it looks really cool. Like, all of his movies look great <laughs> to me. Um, and I, I just like, the, the, he's, he's good at creating like a universe that I want to spend time in, even though it's can be menacing or scary sometimes. I'll have to check out his other movies at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I recommend it. So back in July, I think it was, there was an article that came out that said that horror fans are handling lockdown better. How has your experience ah. been in lockdown and why do you think <laughs> horror fans are handling lockdown better? Oh, I would love, I, I have no idea. I would love to know why they thought that that was happening. Um, that's a great, that's real. that's great. I mean, I think, you know, movie fans who have a huge back, in, in general, who probably all have a big backlog of <laughs> movies they're trying to catch up on are probably taking advantage of this time like I am uh, to, to get caught up in their, uh, on their, on their watch list. Yeah, that's a great, that is an interesting thing to think about. Why would horror fans be handling it better? I mean, I guess like, Kind of like going back to the, you know, the idea of, you know, uh, watching something that's going to push your boundaries and, you know, spending time in a fictional universe where bad things are happening and that presumably has some, some kind of resolution, even if it's not a happy ending. Um, I think sort of living through that in your imagination, maybe in some ways it kind of prepares you to kind of think through these catastrophic events like the ones we're living through right now. Um, I don't know. That's, that's a really, that's really interesting. I hadn't heard that. I'll say, I'll have to send you a link to the article. Yeah, please do. Um, so have you watched any pandemic movies during lockdown this year? (laughs) I've watched a couple. I watched the original, The Crazies, uh, directed by George Romero. Um, that was, that was really interesting. I mean, and what was interesting about that one, I don't know if you've seen that, the original, the remake. I've only seen the remake. Okay. And I've heard the remake is really good. So I've been wanting to check that one out too. Um, I've only seen the original, but um, what's interesting about it is how um, how much of the movie is about um, the just total like bureaucratic ineptitude and the way that that turned it into something so much worse than it had to be, um, which was very uh, I think we're all experiencing that right now. <laughs> it's yeah. a little little too real. Um, yeah, so I've watched that one. I didn't do the thing where everybody was watching. Um, what was the one, ever, the Soderbergh one everyone was watching right at the beginning? Contagion? That's right. I did not do that. It was too close to the beginning. I didn't want to watch any plague movies at that point. I think that's the only one. I think The Craziest is the only one I've watched at this point. What about you? Yeah, I watched the remake of The Crazies, Outbreak, um, Contagion. Uh... I don't know if I've watched any zombie movies. I watched The Night of the Living Dead, the original, oh, okay. the first time months ago. Which oh, I, I okay, cool. Really, I didn't really find it very scary. I was like, hmm. No, it's, yeah, it, it's it's definitely not the same same level of horror as probably what, what we're used to these days. Yeah, yeah. As you said, I've been using this time to, like, catch up on movies, and I've been yeah. going back and watching a lot of, like, the older ones from, like, the 70s or the 60s. Mm-hmm. Maybe. And I'm like, this is just not scary compared to what we watch now but i did like nightmare on elm street the original one. Oh, it's so good yeah i actually saw that for the first time uh, you know within the last like seven or eight years um and yeah it, it's i also did not find it scary even though when i was a kid freddy krueger was definitely um something i was like someone i knew about and that i found extremely scary um yeah, so I didn't find it scary, but I, I think that's just such a good story. It's such a like cool idea. It's such a, and a likable heroine, and the special effects are just terrific. When <laughs> that bed just explodes and blood, yeah. oh, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Freddy Krueger was always somebody I knew about growing up too. And in fact, my uh, we had a, a hamster in my second grade class, and we named him Freddy after Freddy Krueger. <laughs> It's so funny that you say that because <laughs> when I when I played T ball in first grade, um, we were I think like the kids on the team that you know the tiny children like me and also our parents were like all collectively trying to decide what to name our team and we had gray 
was like with the YMCA. We had gray little t-shirts. And uh, apparently some, some other kid on my team wanted to name the team the Gray Freddy Kruegers. <laughs> Did, did it make the cut? No, we were not the grape. I don't even remember what we decided on because there, you know, there's no, nothing cool as gray. So I don't even. I think we were like the t- tornadoes or something like that, or the whirling dervishes or something. But yeah, I, 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 my parents were the ones that remembered some kid on the on the team trying to trying to float the idea of naming the team the Gray Freddy Kruegers. <gasps> That's funny. You would have thought they would have gone with Michael Myers because he wears a gray jumpsuit anyway. Oh, that's true. Yeah, maybe maybe that particular seven-year-old hadn't really consumed the whole Halloween <laughs> franchise yet. That's his parents' fault. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned before um, a movie that is comfort horror to you. What else would you consider to be comfort horror that you'll just throw on if you just need oh. to on the background? I am glad you asked. Um, I About a year ago, I watched Ghoulies for the first time, and I thought it was so funny and so cute. Uh, and I actually, I watched it again, I think just a couple of months later, because they were showing it at uh, Terror Tuesday at the Alamo. Uh, and I dragged one of my friends to see it, who does not like horror movies. And I was like, listen, I, like, I promise you, this movie is not scary. And it really <laughs> isn't. Um, it has because the little creatures are like clearly like hand puppets. They are the size of a person's hand, and they kind of crawl out of places and go <laughs> like kind of make these funny noises. But they're like extremely cute. Like even when they're like supposedly killing somebody, they're they're really cute. And you're kind of I was kind of rooting for the ghoulies the whole movie, <laughs> even though they're supposed to be evil. Who cares? But yeah, I just so I just watched Ghoulies two for the first time a few weeks ago. And I thought that was great too. That one takes place at a amusement park <laughs> or like a, like a sort like a, like a like carnival, not, not a full like six flags, but like a carnival that comes to town. Uh, so that was really fun. So yeah, ghoulies. Uh, I haven't seen ghoulies three, which is ghoulies go to college yet. <laughs> um, sounds great. Uh, love the title, love the concept, love the ghoulies, obviously. Um, so I'll probably get around to that soon, but yeah, Ghoulies 2, or first Ghoulies I've now seen a couple of times and I super love it. It's just, it's so silly and everybody's really over the top and the, the Ghoulies are great. So yeah. It sounds Ghoul- so- and, and the Gremlins. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that was, I, I actually was going to say that sort of like, uh, it was around the same time as a lot of Gremlins ripoffs. So there were like a lot of like, and Gremlins also is great comfort horror. Um, they're very cute too. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of, there was a lot of like small creature horror because there was critters yes. and ghoulies and also hobgoblins, which is another uh, kind of guilty pleasure because hobgoblins is pretty bad. Um, like the creatures are not animated in a particularly interesting way. They're clearly just little puppets that they kind of ha- show them just sort of sitting a lot of the time. They're not even like really moving. But that one is, that one's really like kind of campy and goofy and has a, a sort of fun... Um, mythos because the way that the hobgoblins kill you is by uh reading your mind and making all your dreams come true and then killing you oh well i mean that's the worst way to go exactly it kind of it's kind of fun right you know like all right like if i have to die at least you're gonna like make all my dreams come true like that seems awesome uh yeah so hobgoblins is is pretty bad i have somehow seen it at least three times uh it's I, yeah, I think about it a lot, weirdly. <laughs> but all of those are really, are actually, like, surprisingly fun and I think worthwhile. Um, the Critters is more of a, like, I think they're aliens in that one. And they can, like, shoot their little spikes out. And uh, we got all of those, I think, are great. They're all really fun. And very, very comforting. Very comfort food kind of horror movies. Awesome. Are they streaming anywhere right now? Um, That's a good question. I can find out. Um, I definitely got the double disc um ghoul or ghoulies and ghoulies 2 dvd i don't think ghoulies is streaming anywhere it is not unless you have max go pop up is free on tubi or voodoo oh, okay. if you want to watch ads it's also um if you have mystery science theater anywhere uh there is a mystery science theater episode of hobgoblins so if you have access to those via YouTube or anywhere else where they show Mystery Science Theater. There's an episode about Hobgoblins. I strongly recommend it. All right, cool. So what is on your to-be-watched list right now? 
Oh gosh, I can find that out real quick of horror, I assume. I actually am going to wa- uh, try and watch the Evil Dead remake. Uh, I believe that is streaming somewhere. Yeah, I think it's on uh, HBO Max. Yes, I think that's right. Okay, so yeah, that one's on my list. Um, oh gosh, there is a lot of there's a lot of weird weird stuff on my uh, on my horror <laughs> to be watched list. There's a movie that I've been I've actually had on my list for a long time that I think is kind of a uh, horror classic. I want to say it's from the '70s called The Cremator, '69. I believe it is Czech. It's on the Criterion Channel. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's one that I like, has just like kept coming up over, like off and on like over the years. People being like, "This is a weird foreign horror that like people have slept on, but like don't sleep on it. It's really awesome." <laughs> I think it's like short. I, I don't know very much about it, um, but I know people think it's cool. Let's see <laughs> the people under the stairs. Speaking of, that's is that Stephen King? I that might not be Stephen King. <laughs> I, I I get that confused with I might be I might be thinking of something else, but that I've uh, that's one that I've been trying to get around to for a long time. Uh, the, the Possessor. I don't know if you. It's brand, the new Brandon Cronenberg movie yeah. with Andrea Riseborough. Okay, I think it just came out this year. I think it was one of those ones that like they had ready to go into theaters before quarantine and kind of oh. people were trying to they were trying to decide how to release it. I believe it is see if that's actually streaming anywhere i think that's available for rent now for five dollars okay most places um i'm not usually a fan of cronenberg because i'm i do not like body body horror that much but yeah i was gonna say i was gonna make the distinction that this is brandon cronenberg his son and not david cronenberg but i think he's kind of carrying on the body <laughs> horror torch from what i understand i have not seen his first movie which i believe is called viral um, I have not seen that yet, but it, uh, if you look at the poster, it looks like it's going to be some body horror as well. Um, but that is on my list. I do. I like, uh, possession horror. Did uh, you watch, okay. um, the cleansing hour on Shudder? I have not. Which one? Uh, what is that? It's good. Uh, it's a new movie that just came out. It's about, okay. um, a guy who, uh, stages possessions and streams it online oh that's okay i have heard about this one and you liked it yeah Yeah, it was good it was good okay cool yeah Yeah, i'll check that one out definitely worth a watch yeah yeah i've heard about that (laughs) so when you just want to watch something after you're done working for the day uh how do you decide what you how do you decide what horror movie you want to watch (laughs) um so i have a weird sort of uh complicated system that mostly lives in my head. <laughs> um, so I have like, I think probably like a lot of us at this point, I have most of the streaming services. So if there's one that I haven't watched a movie on lately, I will, a lot, a lot of times I'll pull up like movies directed by women and filter it by whatever streaming service I don't feel like I've been using enough <laughs> lately. So if it's, if it's Shutter. Or movie is another one that I have and kind of will remind myself to use, or um, you know Amazon Prime or HBO or whatever, and I'll filter it by genre or um, you know movies directed by women or whatever it is that I'm sort of trying to tick off the list and whatever tickles my fancy that day. That's how I usually I'll usually decide. Oh, cool. Um, what's your favorite subgenre of horror? Oh gosh. I mean, I love, I love most of them. Um, I love haunted houses. I love possession stories. I like body horror. I know it's, it's tough for a lot of people, but um, particularly this, I don't know what kind of person this, what this, what this says about what kind of person I am, <laughs> but uh, I really like cannibalism stories like the movie raw, which I know is a really tough set for a lot of people. I thought was just great. Um, but it was really beautiful <laughs> and very gross, but I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I've, heard. I've heard that it's really gross. <laughs> it's yeah. It, and it's a lot of it is, isn't even the cannibalism. It's the fact that it's all taking place at a veterinary school. Yeah. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, I do like those kinds of stories. I have pretty strong stomach for that particular kind of stuff. Have you um, ever seen cannibal Holocaust? I have not. Uh, do have you? I have not, no. Okay, yeah, that one's kind of, um, I I keep going back and forth on that one because I've heard that it's kind of more, from some people, that it's more just sort of edgelordy, exploitative kind of stuff. And I'm not really interested in that kind of stuff. Sorry, I got another 
the siren going by. Um, yeah, that's what I, that's a, what a lot of my friends also say about that one is like, I've seen that one or I know it exists and I don't need to watch it again or at all. Yeah. When people say stuff like that, I'm usually like, I can, I can wait on that one. That can, that can get pushed down the priority list when people say stuff like that. Yeah. I, there's, yeah, there's not very many subgenres that I don't like. I'm again, like I said, I'm less interested in the home invasion slash serial killer ones. Although I like when, you know, Michael Myers becomes sort of a superhero uh, in the later uh, Halloween movies. Uh, and, and what's our, and, um, and the same thing with the uh, Friday the 13th movies. I think he becomes, I think uh, Jason really, it really becomes a superhero. Like pretty quickly, he becomes basically supernatural. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's really fun to me mm-hmm. um, when, some, when someone sort of inexplicably is like unkillable. <laughs> like it's silly because you know going into it, I mean, you're, by the time you get to like Friday the 13th part seven, you're like, all right, like this guy's not really going to get killed at the end. But mm-hmm. I also just think that's, really amusing (laughs) um yeah i've had a couple of people come on and say they were going to see jason x in the theater and they were just like laughing and having a great time and people around them were getting upset because they weren't taking oh that's so funny i I mean if you're taking jason x seriously i mean god bless you (laughs) that i mean that movie is that is is so i have seen it's one of it's one of the ones i've seen uh it's it's really really silly i mean that that really is one you can put on when you have a hangover or you you want something to fall asleep to and it has some gross parts but it's also like extremely silly so man good for them if they're that invested in jason in space because it is it's real goofy (laughs) good to know it's on i think it's on hbo max right now so it is on my list but i've only seen friday the 13th the first one, the third one, and the fourth one, I couldn't, I didn't want to pay for the second one, so I just skipped it. But they're all sure. the same. So. The second one is is arguably the best. So it is, I would actually say it's worth paying for. I I saw it for the first time actually pretty recently. That was a big blind spot for me. Uh, and I did actually like it a lot. Um, I think I, yeah, I think they get pretty silly. Uh, they get very silly towards the end. Um I would say you maybe don't need the full, uh, you don't have to go through the whole Friday the 13th canon if you want to watch Jason X. I don't think you're losing any of the Jason mythos uh, <laughs> if you if you jump in on part 10. But I haven't seen them all, so I'm probably not the best person to answer that question. <laughs> okay, let me know on Twitter if, uh, if we're mistaken. <laughs> we need to see all of them. Yes, I'll watch them all and I'll report back. But, but I, I watched Jason X without ever having seen... I think I had seen most of the previous one, which is Jason Goes to Hell. Mm-hmm. And then I watched all of Jason X. And I thought it was pretty fun. Um, so mm-hmm. so I, think, I think you can enjoy it without seeing all the Friday the 13th movies. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Who would you say is your favorite final girl? Oh, man. I mean, uh, I'm going to have a really hard time picking anybody but Tree from the Happy Death Day movies. Oh, I, love um, I love her so much. Um, and I don't, she's not really a final girl in the sense that she, I mean, like maybe kind of in the second one. Yeah, I don't know if, she, if she's really technically a final girl since... It's not a. It's not the kind of movie where everyone else is just dropping dead. You know, she's kind of the target the whole time. But I think she's a final girl in spirit, and I also just I love every second that she's on screen. Yeah. So she, she's, she's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. So do you think they're going to kill off Sydney in Scream Five? <laughs> I I haven't actually seen all the Scream movies. I think I've only seen one and two. So I'm probably not qualified to answer that. I'm going to say no, though. Like, why? Why close the door on that? <laughs> what? What about you? Are you? Are you um, a scream? One scream of my a, friends. A file? Yes, I love it. Um, one of Good. my friends made the argument that in order to keep the franchise going, they need to pass the torch to a younger generation, and they oh. have like David Arquette and Neve Campbell and Courtney Cox. So. Uh, yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, you could also like have them be killed in between movies. Yeah. You know, just, or just like, or just start fresh and be like, okay, they're off living their lives, being happy. And now, now a younger generation is being terrorized. Yeah. Um, you're actually kind of making me want to watch all the other ones. Go for Scream, it. I didn't really like Scream 2. Scream 1, I think is very good. 
I didn't really care for the second one, mostly because of all the weird, like, Courtney Cox and David. I felt like there's a lot of winking about them being together in real life that I just, like, didn't care about. Because <laughs> I, only, I only watched it a couple of years ago. And I, I was like, well, they're not even together anymore. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, number three is known as the worst one. I love it, personally. Okay. <laughs> but, and then number four is just very, um, very of the social media age, even though it came out in 2009. Uh, okay. They, they all have like webcams and phones and okay. all that. So they stream everything. So yeah. And it's very gory. Maybe not okay. gory, but it's gorier than the other ones. Okay. All right. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll watch three and four just to complain. And, and so we scream five is coming, right? We're getting yeah, a scream five. In 2022. Okay. All right, cool. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll catch up before that. I have plenty yeah. of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have time. Yeah, I wouldn't mind it if they stopped making Scream movies because I like mm. it as a trilogy, but whatever. So, Okay, so I feel like I want to ask you now about the Final Destination uh, quintilogy, I guess. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know if they're ever going to make any more of those. <laughs> oh, no. Actually, I had Jeffrey Riddick on the show uh-huh. uh, recently. Oh, he, he wrote the original Final Destination. Oh, my God. Cool. And he said there is another one in the works. Yay! Oh, that's great. I mean, I did you see five? Five? I, I Four and five, I think, are the only ones I have. Wait, is that true? Have I seen four? I think I've seen one, two, and three, but I liked them a lot. So have I seen four? Which one is four? Four, the, um, <laughs> they're at a racetrack. Okay, I haven't seen that one. Yeah. No, it's... But I've definitely not seen Five, which I think people is a lot of people's favorite. Five, it... The ending just brings it full circle. It's very okay, good. Great. It's on H... I think it's on HBO Max. Okay, great. Watch that one. Okay, I definitely will. I, I really like one, two, and three. Yeah, yeah. No, but he said that there's there's another one coming down the pipeline. Oh, made me great. sad, but... Because I thought the fifth one was such a... Oh, good sure. ...book ending to it. Um, so have you had any noteworthy experiences seeing a horror movie in theaters back when we were allowed to go to movie theaters? Oh, God. Um... <laughs> noteworthy i mean the last movie i saw in theaters before before the before quarantine started was uh the invisible man oh, cool. um which is one of the scariest movies i've ever seen it was great um oh yeah it was so good and just so so tense all throughout and i was just like digging my fingernails into my palms like the whole time so that was when i was really glad i saw in theaters um I, th- I think one of the more noteworthy ones was The Conjuring 2, which I just thought was terrific. I think a lot of people like, kind of were kind of meh on it or didn't like it as much as the first one. I thought it was, I thought it was scarier. I thought it was, I just thought it was better. And it's, that's one that's two full hours long. And I, I think pretty scary from yeah. start to finish. And there was a woman sitting behind me and my friend who we saw on an opening night and who I believe was so scared that she was crying. <laughs> So I, I thought it did a pretty good job. And that was definitely one that, you know, maybe if you saw it on the small screen, it wouldn't have the same impact. But uh, yeah, seeing it on the, on the big screen was, uh, was great. And uh, yeah, really clearly effective, at least for me, my friend and the woman behind us. Um, I also saw um, the woman in black um, in the theater with our mutual friend, Matt, and a couple of, I think several other people that you know, I think probably my, no, I don't think Laura was there. Anyway several people that you and I both know. And that was a like, it had been out for a little while. Theater wasn't very full, but for some reason, everyone in the theater kind of all clustered in the middle of the theater. So we were all kind of sitting really near each other. And that one, I I don't know if you've seen it, it has a ton of jump scares. Okay. (laughs) So, you know, it has a ton of jump scares. I think it's pretty scary. It's another haunted house movie that you know, did a number on me, maybe is not scary if you don't like jump scares or haunted houses, but I thought it was super scary, but it was, that was a fun one to experience in theater with other people. Cause everybody was like reacting very loudly <laughs> to all the jump scares. And I just love that in general. I love like, you know, the, the like the, Oh God, and the other one was the Meg. That was another one. It was not kind of not really horror. Oh, God, this, okay, sorry, okay, so before the Meg, I saw the Meg in a, like, packed theater in um, downtown Brooklyn, the Court Street Theater, last summer, I think, or whenever, whatever summer it was that it came out, 
And so before the Meg, the Meg was super fun. I loved it. Everyone in the theater was on the same page. But before the movie, they showed the trailer for The Nun, speaking of The Conjuring 2. <laughs> they showed the trailer for The Nun, which I don't know if you remember that trailer. It has a really good jump scare in it. It has the only good jump scare in it. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's not a very good movie. And uh, yeah, so the, the by far the most scary part of the movie is what they show in the trailer. It's where she's she's going down the hallway she kind of looks one way. It's like very tense. There's no music. Like it's clearly like something's about to jump out at her and she kind of looks one way and then something jumps out at her from the other direction. And that, that got everyone in the theater. Like everyone was like, like, you know, like the, you know, the, the parody thing where people like throw their popcorn because they're like, I think that actually happened. I think that really got people. And then everyone started laughing. Like that's always really like fun to me when that happens in the theater where you all kind of like, collectively experience a jump scare and then you all kind of giggle to like mm. release the tension and like that was really fun yeah a lot of people have have pointed out that after we get really scared we often laugh yeah <laughs> i really enjoy that that in the, that collective experience of like we all kind of were like oh yeah they really got me <laughs> <laughs> but not really i'm not scared yeah. i'm tough i just you know i know it's not real i'm fine <laughs> yeah. So speaking of movies, what movie are you most upset that has been postponed because of COVID? Oh, Candyman. <laughs> I'm so sad. I want to see it so bad. It looks so awesome. <laughs> oh, that little, that little puppet trailer. Oh, it looks so good. Uh, Nia DaCosta was actually in our, um, I think a couple of times she's been in our uh, Tuesday night movie, like online movie trivia um, not on my team, I wish, but, um, yeah, I do like, yeah, I do on online movie trivia every Tuesday night and she's, she's come on and, uh, and been, been in the, in the, um, in the chat and, you know, played on a team a couple of times. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Me and yeah. my friends, we pay, we play horror movie trivia like every Sunday night, but we don't oh, that's awesome. like that. <laughs> No, that's great though. I love, I, I definitely did better the weeks like leading up to Halloween when they were like focusing on horror movies. I was like, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> so do you hold any unpopular horror movie opinions or or are there any horror movies that you love that people generally don't like oh yeah probably gosh i i feel like i really do let me just i'm actually gonna go back and look. i mean i feel like the you know the opinion that the conjuring 2 is a flawless five-star movie is probably not that popular i think i probably love that movie more than like anybody else did you know that ed and lorraine were only at that house for one day in real I life. did not know that. Oh yeah. my god, that's wild. I mean, I, I you know, I mean, I know that's not real. So you know, <laughs> I I figured a lot of it was sort of fudged for the uh, for the movie. So there is a movie called, and I I think like legit like horror fans are gonna know what I'm talking about. But there's a movie called Lair of the White Worm that um, I think is so funny. That that's actually another. I've only seen it once, so I can't officially call it a comfort movie. Uh, it's a Ken Russell movie, so I don't know if, how familiar you are with his oeuvre. He's really, really weird. He is a weird, weird man. And he's made some movies I don't super care for, but Lair of the White Worm, I think, is just just flawless. It's so weird and so funny. It's not really scary. It's from the 80s. It has a very, very young Hugh Grant in it, oh, wow. um, which is really fun. See, I don't know if that's an unpopular opinion. I think people who have seen Lair of the White Worm get what I'm talking about, but I don't know if most of them love it as much as I do. It's it's really it's really bonkers. Ken Russell is always bonkers. It is about a um uh it is about a Scottish town that has a some sort of dragon creature living under it that um occasionally manifests as a super super sexy lady and prowls around the town i believe it's a um story or an unfinished novel by bram stoker based on on one of bram stoker's last works uh, which i've not read yeah this is probably just going to be, be me talking about like things i think were like underhyped and or or underseen i really loved the shallows the shark movie with blake lively i don't know if you saw this pretty recent one i just thought it was really terrific like for a movie with basically one person in it i, th I thought i thought it was terrific um there is a <laughs> there's a short movie that i've i've seen many times and just gets better and weirder every time called possibly in michigan and that's one of those movies i only know about it's 12 minutes long i only know about it because of letterboxd 
which is basically like a social media where you log your movies, kind of like like Goodreads yeah. uh, for movies. Okay, okay, so you're familiar. So um, a lot of, like a weirdly high number of people on Letterboxd have possibly in Michigan as like one of their four favorite movies of all time. So I was like, okay, I guess I have to see this. And it is this very strange, like 12 minute movie made in the eighties, again, about cannibalism. Yeah, I knew that was going to come up again because I like my cannibalism movies, but uh, yeah, it's about cannibalism and perfume. Uh, it's very strange. A lot of it takes place in a shopping mall. Um, it's kind of a musical. Um, oh, okay. It's very, very these are, odd. These are things that all just so seamlessly go together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's very, very odd. I I have like extremely great affection for it. I've now seen it several times. It again, it gets better every time. And, and that that you can just watch on YouTube for free. Um, and I strongly recommend it to anybody who likes weird things or wants to be the the cool person who makes their friends watch. Possibly in Michigan, just says just throw it on and say, here, watch this, watch this weird thing, and just watch everybody's faces and be like, oh my god, what is happening? <laughs> All right, I will. Um, maybe I'll do that tonight. Yeah, check that one out. I also really loved um, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, which yeah, I believe came out last year. You liked it? Yeah, I thought yeah. it was great. That was really effective. You know, for such a like, formative book for so many people, uh, I think it really did, did a great job of capturing what was, what was so effective about those, about those books and the illustrations, even though it didn't really look, it didn't have the same look as the sort of charcoal illustrations from the book, but, uh, you know, I I thought it was still just really effective and uh, and moving weirdly. Yeah, have you watched the scary stories t- to tell in the dark documentary yet? No, I haven't. It's on. It's on. Did Amazon you Did you Prime. like it? Yeah, it's really okay. Cool. What do you think? Yeah. It's about the books. Does it, does it talk about the books? Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. Do they interview like the like the author? He is no longer around, but um, oh, okay. He is. Um, his son and the guy who did the illustrations and they spend a lot of time talking to the woman who petitioned in a small town outside of Seattle, Washington to get the books banned. (laughs) Oh, I didn't know. Good luck with that. I mean, they, they tried to ban everything in elementary schools, so I'm not surprised. (laughs) Oh, I guess like the fact that I liked mother, which I don't even really think of as a horror movie, but it's coming up in my like, highest rated horror movies i don't know if you saw that or what you I thought about that. it did yeah. you like it <laughs> it was an experience i don't yes. know if i'll ever watch it again but. i honestly don't know if i will either and i did like it a lot but uh, yeah i don't know if i will if i'll watch it again it but. wasn't what i was expecting <laughs> what were you expecting i'm just curious i maybe like a home invasion movie yeah that really it starts out that way for sure doesn't yeah. it yeah I think I liked it more than a lot of people did. Yeah, so that's those are my those are my uh, I guess underhyped uh, or underseen horror movies. Cool. So if you could remake or reimagine one horror movie, which one would it be? Man, I think just because it keeps coming up when I'm like I flip over to my list, but um, the thing was the first one that came to mind. Even though like it's such a masterpiece that I know it would be really hard to do it justice. And I think I would, what I would probably want to do is do something like, like the prequel that came out a few, a few years ago and just kind of take the same, like similar creature design, similar setting and just do totally new characters rather than try to remake, remake it like, you know, super faithfully, because again, it's really, really hard to improve on. I feel like a lot of Stephen King source material, I feel like is really ripe for a remake. Like I read Salem's Lot a while, like like maybe like a few months ago, and I think that would be a good one. I, my understanding is there's just, there's a Toby Hooper maybe mini series. I've not seen it, so yeah, there's definitely um, a film version of it. It, may, it might be a mini series, but I've okay. seen. There is a like a screenshot, not a screenshot, but like a picture from the movie that often mm-hmm. comes up when I'm online, and it's the the vampire kid in a window or something. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I think that would be a fun one to just to update for for more modern audience. Yeah, I also I uh, the the reanimator movies are coming up when I flip over my movie list, and I really love this. I mean, that, that's another like franchise that I feel like is really hard to improve on because they're so fun already. Um, but it it would be fun to to sorry, it would but be gory. So I have not definitely seen. gory. Yeah, I, but they're like they're so silly. I kind of like that's like the brand of horror comedy that I really enjoy. And I think it would be fun to do those with like the 
the benefit of the CGI that we have at our disposal now. Cause, uh, you know, because they have to, I mean, the practical effects in the first one are great. Like, they do a great job with what they have. But, I mean, it's clearly, like, a lot of the, a lot of the shots are somebody's head with, like, a hole cut in the, uh, the table. And then, they, you know, they, they're yeah. sawing away at the, the, what, the fake body below it. You know, so just, it's pretty obvious. So I think it would be cool to see what they could do with, with better, better tech now. Yeah, that, yeah, that's interesting. Maybe we could redo the movie Cabin Fever with a better script. And a less offensive. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because that was one that I really felt like I was missing what the point on, and I was just missing what everyone else was seeing and apparently loved. I was a lot of it. I don't remember the specifics of what I didn't like, but I just remember being very like off put by it, just kind of all throughout. And yeah, and I, <laughs> I, I went on Letterbox to kind of leave it, leave it leave, left it kind of a scathing review, and people, no, no one was like mad at me, but people definitely wanted to explain why they liked it and i maybe was i was like was i too hard on it um so i'm, I'm glad to hear you say <laughs> that you didn't care for it either yeah it's also very gross but you couldn't change that. very gross oh my god <laughs> yeah um so my last question is if you had to spend quarantine with one horror villain who would it be <laughs> that's really funny <laughs> i mean freddy krueger's pretty funny but i mean he's I also wouldn't be able to sleep, so I don't think I would like that. Sleep is definitely getting me through quarantine. So since I'm talking about Reanimator, maybe uh, Jeffrey Combs' character from Reanimator, he seems he seems like he just wants to do science and uh, reanimate stuff, and I think that would be a really a really fun way to to spend quarantine. If I didn't have a day job, I would just do experiments on things and pour reanimated goo on him and see what happens. Uh, the Bride of Reanimator, the second one, has a lot of. Uh, a lot of scenes where where um, animals or severed body parts or sometimes both get the reanimating goo uh, dropped on them and get kind of grafted together in interesting ways. Um, so that there's a lot. There's a, a big part of the movie is a a hand that maybe is grafted to something else, like a bat wing or something, and it curls around and gets into mischief. And I think that'd be really fun. Sounds interesting. Maybe I'll have to check that out at some point. Finally. I, I like those movies a lot. I think they're really entertaining. Well, thank you so much for being here. Do you want to tell people where they can find you on Twitter and Letterboxd? Um, sure. Yeah, my Twitter handle is Ashley B. Wells, all one word. And my Letterboxd handle, I believe, is Quick Draw Kiddo, all one word. Definitely more active on Letterboxd than Twitter, but you can find me at either of those places. All right. Well, thank you again. I will hopefully see you soon for a movie night. Yeah, I hope so too. All right. Have a good one. You too. That's it for this week's episode of Who's There. I hope you had as much fun listening as we did while we were recording. Thanks again to Ashley for coming on. You can find links to her Letterboxd and Twitter accounts in the show notes. As always, we'd really appreciate it if you could take a second to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and subscribe to our feed wherever you listen to us. Thank you to everyone who's already left us a review. We really appreciate it as it really helps people find us. You can follow us on Twitter at Who's There Pod. We're on Instagram at Who's There Podcast. Or if you have any questions, comments, concerns, horror movie recommendations, or you'd like to be a guest, shoot us an email at thewhosetherepod at gmail.com. Until next time, stay scary and wear a mask.